Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But they say in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say that just after a few weeks of quiet, the sky is no longer thick with fumes, but blue and grey and clear. Today, churches, synagogues, mosques and temples are preparing to welcome and shelter the homeless, the sick, the weary. All over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. All over the world, people are looking at their neighbours in a new way. All over the world, people are waking up to a new reality. How big we really are, to how little control we really have. To what really matters? To love. The birds are singing again. The sky is clearing. Spring is coming. And we are always encompassed by love. Open the windows of your soul and though you may not be able to touch across the empty square, Sing. Intensive care. Breathe in through your nose. Hold it. Two, three, four, five. Breathe out through your mouth. Two, three, four, five. Breathe in Kemp Town Mutual Aid Group. Hold on. Meal deliveries, washing taken in, shopping for vulnerable neighbours, sewing hospital scrubs from duvet covers and pillowcases. Breathe out, panic, cancelled gigs, lost livelihoods, universal credit. Breathe in care workers, hold them close. Travelling to my son's home on empty buses, wearing PPE, reassuring him, making sense of a world that is suddenly more autistic than he is. Breathe out avoidance of eye contact, control of new routines, shopping without speaking, two metres apart. Breathe in shelf stackers, hold boxes, plastic gloves, hidden faces, guarding the entrance, newly celebrated as key workers. Breathe out trolleys, piled full of pasta and toilet roll, police tape on the floor, 37 people ahead of us in the queue to get in, midnight races for delivery slots. Breathe in postal workers, holding heaviest of sacks, urgent deliveries left on the doorstep, parcels unsigned for, birthday presents. Breathe out desperate online trading, knockdown prices, Scary bills, government letters. Breathe in National Health Service, holding you, holding you, holding you, breathing for you, care that is intensive and united. Breathe in compassion, humanity, bravery, kindness, generosity. Hold and remember, this will pass. Dear Earth, A self-isolating relative phoned me yesterday. One thing she said struck me in particular. Nature is ferocious. Beautiful, but ferocious. We must plan to protect ourselves. She was thinking about coronavirus and the lacklustre political response to the crisis. But it's a sentiment I've often encountered in climate change circles about, well, you, Earth. You are, I'm told, an angry deity, bent on vengeance, like the Old Testament God raining fire, flood and plague on recalcitrant human beings. 
Terrifying though this vision is, there's also an odd kernel of comfort in it. Because divine rage at least demonstrates engagement in our fate as a species. Jehovah, no matter how hard he smote his people, would always leave a few obedient survivors. The truth, at least as far as this atheist is concerned, is far harsher. People like to attribute characteristics to the virus. Malevolence, ruthlessness, cunning. But coronavirus bears us no ill will. It is a nucleic acid molecule honed by evolution to hijack the reproductive mechanism of host cells in order to produce copies of itself. And you, earth, spinning rock that you are, are similarly unperturbed by emotion or such elevated human concepts as justice. It makes no difference to you whether the cloak of life that swirls around you is a verdant web or a desiccated, tattered rag. You have been hot before. You have been cold before. You have been very nearly denuded of all life on quite a few occasions. It's all the same to you. I feel the build-up of bile in my throat, like something will erupt at any time. But it is stuck, and I am choking. And then, gradually, I notice the resonant healing of birdsong, the warmth of the sun on my cold cheek. I breathe deeply and my breath clouds, blurring my sight, cold air tears stinging my eyes. I feel the ruptures that reverberate across this wounded world and it cuts. Pause, breathe, be. Dear Dandelion, you are often considered a weed, yet you are so joyously bright, like a small sun. Your leaves feed and heal. You are phenomenally strong, strong and persistent enough to break through concrete. And having so many seeds, so easily distributed, irrepressible. Dear Dandelion, I imagine a future where the principles by which the world operates are golden rules. First, do no harm. Care for all life. Seek joy. Dear Dandelion, if our deepest compass points to that future, it's the one we'll bring into being. We can be like you. Joyful, bright, healing, persistent, stronger than concrete, irrepressible, so very many of us. I think anyone that says miracles aren't possible must not have planted seeds. I am here, in my privilege, a brightly sunny home, looking out on a verdant communal garden, eating fresh salad from my son's happy place allotment, enjoying the homemade bread he brings. But I cannot be truly well. I cannot be well when the planet is shrinking and dying, its cries unheeded, as we exploit its resources, its people. I cannot be well when I see the breadth and depth of inequality and suffering, when the wisdom of the world's first people is not only denied, but condemned where slavery is rampant, disguised in cheap products, used and discarded without a thought. When these are the people who suffer the storm, the annihilation, whipped up by the greed of the global north, I cannot be well when families in high-rises are overcrowded with children, living in poverty, with worries of money, of health, in all forms and nowhere to go. I cannot be well when the doctors and nurses are not fully protected, the dustmen 
shop assistants and farm workers are not fully rewarded. However much I love the earth, how could I possibly be well? For those of us who look at the trajectory of our civilization and cry out for someone, anyone, to pull the emergency brake, the essential question has always been, how on earth do we turn the runaway train of progress away from the precipice it is speeding towards? I think that within each of us asking this question there is a child pulling helplessly at the sleeve of a disinterested parent, begging to be heard and bewildered by the lack of response. Then, something so unexpected happens, so suddenly that we are left blinking in shock. It all stops. The brake is pulled. The train skids, screeching and bumping to a halt. Covid-19 halts our civilization in its tracks. Nature itself provides the impossible, the unimaginable, and in the blink of an eye, the planes stop flying, the cars stop driving, and every ecosystem on Earth breathes a sigh of relief. It is not a Disney moment. People are terrified, locked in their homes. Suddenly our parents are in danger, and we hold the fate of the elderly in our hands. We are eating poisoned food, drinking poisoned water and breathing poisoned air, while the days slip by behind the window, unseen as we sit in front of our screens. We are a civilization of the unwell, and suddenly the unwell are at risk. My name is Joseph Rose, and I love this world. I will not be quiet about this, or embarrassed to say that I love the trees, the rivers, the mountains, the oceans, the colours and smells. I love the endless variety and the limitless beauty that waits for us beyond the window. I write all of this as a message to the resilience builders out there, to the medicine men and women, to the activists, the environmentalists, to any human being who dares to imagine that a better future is possible. This message is simple and undoubtedly many of you are spreading this in some version. This lurch in the status quo, this sudden emergency stop is a window of opportunity that most of us have hardly dared pray for. We have reached a crossroads. Many paths lead from this place. More than ever, our future is held in our collective hands. This is the time to organise ourselves. The corona pandemic demonstrates the instability of our system. It is a tremor that shows us how unprepared we are for the earthquakes to come. It shows us our true priorities. If our system collapses, where will our food come from? Where will our water come from? Where will our energy come from? How well do we know our neighbours, our community? Resilience is found in the connections between people, in our relationships with the earth. It is the choice to care for one another, the choice to be generous. Building resilience is not a hardship or a burden, it is poetry and art. It is doing what feels right. It is planting a seed and watching something grow. It is harvesting food that we have cared for. It is symbiosis. It is collecting rainwater for your garden. It is noticing the first apple blossoms. It is making new friends. Resilience is doing the thing that you have always wanted to do. It is taking a deep breath and letting go of all the drama. Embrace connection and community. It is the mortar that binds us together, that makes us resilient. With love, Joseph. I don't want the old world back. I want to inhabit this world differently. Now is a time like no other, full of hope and searing pain, full of heroes willing to give their last breath for another, and heroes forced to put their lives on the line. In this time, I grow claws and roots and dream of a tomorrow I didn't think was possible last month. May it come. We thought we knew about icebergs. They came out of the north and disappeared to the south, more and more every year. We didn't take much notice. We just carried on doing what we'd always done, filling up the land, emptying the sea, throwing stuff away. 
until the big bear came. It arrived while we were sleeping. It blocked our harbor. No boats could get in, no boats could get out. We tried to push it out to sea. We tried to drag it off the rocks. Someone even tried to blow it up. But the big bird did not move. People grew hungry and afraid. The mayor called a meeting to decide what to do. Everyone had an opinion, but no one could agree. Then a child stood up and spoke. We didn't pay attention, but she kept on until we heard. Listen to the bird, she said. Maybe it can tell us something. Now, I wonder how things would be if we had done what that child asked. There are people around the world. I know it's a hard time now. We can't go to school and we can't play with our friends. I understand I have to stay home so we don't get sick. I want to say to all the people who are sick or their family is sick, I know you are sad now, but I hope you all feel better soon. I made this colorful letter for you to cheer you up. I want also to say to all the key workers in the world, thank you for helping everyone and for working so hard. Thank you. Querida Tierra, estoy encerrado en casa y no puedo salir a disfrutar de la primavera. Es una de las estaciones más bonitas para mí. A cambio, me consuela saber que con la mayoría de los humanos confinados, todo este tiempo está sirviendo para que otras especies con las que compartimos la vida están saliendo adelante y tu salud, querida Tierra, está mejorando enormemente. Solo espero que cuando pase esta pandemia Bajemos el ritmo y pensemos mucho más en cuidar tu salud y la de todos los que habitamos en ti. Hasta pronto, Madre Tierra. I used to travel to the edges of the world, to hear the voices of nature, to be a student of the earth. Now nature says, you must travel inside your soul. In there I am waiting, listening, guiding. Don't go anywhere. The beauty and relief of the outer world is in here, waiting. If grief truly is the price we pay for love, then let this be a love letter. 